I just get tired of watching it. No, he doesn't. Then they may need to keep him quiet. All right, you said you sent some. I think I saw there, but I saw your name this morning. There we are. All right, let's look at those. Do an order. That one is 618, that one is 612, 612 comes first. All right, this is question sent out of 6.1, 23-6. 23 slash 6, that means it's like number 6. And that is a test, no, well, it could be a test question. What does the word say right here? Evaluate means what? Plug and what? Plug and chug. It means you're not going to use algebra, you're going to use what? Order of what? Mm -hmm. So wherever there's an X, I'm going to plug in a set of what? A big set of parentheses. Plus four. And what is, what are we going to plug in to the big set of parentheses? Say again? Two thirds. And in fact, Let's animate it a little bit. And we blue. Two thirds. Two thirds. Now the first thing you want to do is parentheses or exponent, whichever one you want to call. It. So two thirds squared. What's two squared? Four. What's three squared? Nine. Minus five over one, minus two over three, plus four over one. And what happens to the fours? I think you is one over nine, minus ten over what? Three, plus four over one. Well, notice I'm making everything's fractions. Why am I making everything's fractions? Everything fractions to make you mad? No, to tell you, either consciously or subconsciously, that you got to get a common denominator sometime. So what's the common denominator of nine, three, and one? Nine. I put a nine here. A nine here. Negative and positive. How many times will 9 go into 9? One time. One times 1 is 1. How many times will 3 go into 9? 3 times 10. And how many times will 1 go into 9? 9 times 4 is... So, we have 1 minus 30 plus 36 over... Nine. One minus thirty is what? Negative twenty nine plus thirty six is what? Is it seven or five? Seven? Whatever you say, I just negative twenty nine plus six, thirty six, yeah. Over nine. Should be an answer. And that is a test question. You might as well go ahead and think you're going to get about one or two on those. Question. Right. Complaint. 
Notice how I did the problem. What do you notice about the way I did it? Step by step, and I put everything where it needs to be. In other words, first thing I did, every time I've told you, when you do evaluate or determine, wherever there's an X, you put in a big set of what? I get so many students. First thing I do, they say, I just can't do that problem. Or they get mad. First thing I look at is the first step. And guess what they don't do? They don't put the big set of parentheses. And then if they don't do that, what do they mess up with then? They try to do everything in two steps or less than two steps. That's the biggest problem I see with students that get these wrong. Now, there's some that don't understand what to do, and that's, a, that's I understand that. But the biggest two problems I see is, one, they don't put the big set of parentheses, and two, they try to go from this step right here to this step right here in like one or two steps. Okay. Let me get there. Hold on. Please go away. Okay, the other one, 60 or 80 and 79. So 79 slash 15. All right, this says the time T in minutes needed for clothes hanging on a line outdoors to dry at a specific temperature. Depends on the humidity, which is true. Humidity, when the humidity is high, it takes like forever for a clothes to dry. The time can be explained by this equation. T is equal to blah, blah, blah. Where H is the humidity expressed as a decimal number. Find the length of time required for clothing to dry if there is 90% humidity. So T... is equal to 2H squared plus 80H plus 50. Can somebody tell me what this is? I'm sorry, I heard. Blah, blah, blah. Huh? I didn't hear you. Yes, plug numbers in. But what is what have we just studied? A what? Formula. This is 6.1, but this is actually 6.3 material. Plug and what? Like you said, plug and chug. So we got 0.9. H is equal to 0 0.90. Which means very high what? Mm -hmm. Dang old Buford, dang old Myrtle Beach humidity. Okay? So, T is equal to, first thing I do is draw big sets parentheses. 2 times parentheses squared plus 80 times parentheses plus 50. Now I'm going to plug in a point 0.9 here and a point 0.9 here. Now you may need your calculator, but what's point 0.9 squared? 0 0.081? Y'all check me on the calculator. <laughs> Plus 80 times 0.9 plus 50, and you can do this on the calculator. So somebody do 2 times 0 0.081, somebody give me that number. What is it? 
plus, well, 10% of 80. Well, I asked y'all what 0.9 squared, y'all said, I said 0.081. Okay. 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 And 2 times 0.81 is 1.62. All right, now, 10% of 80 is 8. So 8 times 9 is 72. Okay, I think so, yeah. And 1.62 plus 72 plus 50, yeah, y'all do that in the calculator. What do you get? One twenty three point six two. Okay. So what does that mean? It takes that that gum laundry and divides it by one point three six two. Okay. 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 Minutes, one hundred twenty three minutes, which is almost an hour and what? An hour and a half. You work. Yeah, that's right, class. Or two hours. Two hours. Yeah, two hours, three minutes, two hours, four minutes, whatever, something like that. Takes it a while. Next question. This one is 6.180 slash 16. 16 in the online homework. A football is kicked vertically upward from a height of three feet with initial speed of blah, blah, blah. Here is your formula. Describe the ball's height above the ground in T seconds after it was kicked. Use this formula to find the ball's height three seconds after it was kicked. All right, this is your formula. Time. T is always time. H is equal to negative 16 T squared plus 55 T. I'm turning it around where we can understand it. Plus 3. Because that's the way you write it. I don't know why they write it like this. It just messes students up. A football is kicked vertically upward from a height of three feet. We don't care about that. With an initial feet speed of 55 feet per second. Okay. All of that. You know what all this tells you? All of this tells you that. So do you need any of this? No. Because that's all in there. Describes the ball's height, height, after T what? T seconds. So after, after so many seconds, if you was to plug in, that's supposed to be a T right here. After you plug in like three seconds or four seconds or whatever, that's what the height is what you're going to get. So you plug in three seconds? Well, what does this say? You plug in three seconds. So that'd be H is equal to negative 16 parentheses squared plus 55 parentheses plus 3. Then plug in 3. The reason I'm dotting it in is because that's what we're given. Don't get it confused with this three right here. That dotted in three comes from right here. This three comes from the three foot height. So don't get those confused. So H is equal to negative 16 times 9, excuse me, plus 55 times 3 plus 3. H 
is equal to negative 16 times 9 is negative what? 144? Y'all check me. Plus 165 plus 3. Somebody check my math. And then negative 144 plus 65, 21, which is 24. So at three seconds, that football is at 24 feet. As long as you keep the sign in front of it, it doesn't matter. So this negative 16t, I'll put it right here. The positive 5t goes right here. And then this is a plus in front of that 3, because if it was negative, it would be negative in front of it. <clears throat> Those are three questions that could come from 6.1 or 6.3. You see what I'm saying? Because that's basically formulas. Except in 6.1, they call it equations because I haven't told you about formulas yet. Okay? So those are three good questions. They could be on a test question from 6.1 or 6.3. Now, what I'm going to cover today is, well, let me get rid of this. I'm going to go into inequalities. I think that's probably the next uh, section that we talk about. What chapter is this? I can't remember. Six. And I think we're on 6.4, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because 6.5, or 6.5 is inequalities. We'll just go ahead and open this slide, one of the two. I can't remember which one's which. Variation. Not going to go. Okay, we'll go over variation. I don't like variation, but we'll go over it. Before we go over it, I want to do something else. Let's say I give you a recipe, and that recipe makes 12 cookies. Everybody with me? Everybody awake? All right, two eggs, three cups of milk, one cup of sugar, one stick of butter, one cup of flour. And I say that that makes 12 cookies, and I give you the dimensions of the cookies or whatever, and they make 12 cookies. Then what do I do if I want to make 24 cookies? Well, to get the multiplier, which is 2, I divide 24 by what? 2, or 12, sorry. 24 by 12. Because this is the number that I want, and this is the number that the recipe what? Makes. Okay? So if I want to make 36, then I got to multiply everything by what? Three. If I want to make 48, 48 divided by 12 is what? Four. Then I multiply everything by four. But what if I want to make 75 cookies? Then you just don't do it. You multiply whatever the closest thing you know. You take 75 and you divide it by 12. Somebody take the calculator and divide by 12. What do you get? So I multiply all my ingredients by what? 6.2 or 6.3. Now I know theoretically you, not, you don't do that. I know that. You probably multiply by 7 and just eat the, the cookies that you don't the, above 75, right? You just do seven and you say, okay, I'll eat the ones that I don't need. All right? The whole point is all of these 
all of these numbers right here, all of these numbers are what we call multipliers. Now you're used to using them because some of you might, you know, be cook, cooks and chefs and all that. But you have to have a multiplier to multiply by if you're going to extend your cookie making by a recipe that just makes 12. You've got to multiply. And if it comes out to be a decimal, you multiply by that decimal. Does everybody understand that? Everybody understand the whole 2 times 3 times? Everybody understand that? All of this next section is based on multiplier. Okay? And that multiplier is called K. Alright? So I just wanted to go through this little spiel because now you're understanding what the multiplier is. The multiplier is a number that you multiply to make the ingredients for the cookies that you want. If you want 48 cookies, the multiplier is 4. If you want two dozen cookies, the multiplier is 2. Yes. In other words, how do you get that number? Well, you do 48 over 12. It's a ratio. 48 over 12 is the number that you want over the number that the recipe what? Makes. And that's how you get that number. What? Yeah, so you multiply instead of two eggs, you put how many eggs? And three, six eggs. And here would be eight eggs. And here it'd be 12.4 eggs, which is 12 and a half eggs. See what I'm saying? Nobody's going to multiply by 6.2. You're going to multiply by 7, and then you're going to make 75 cookies and eat the rest. Okay? So that's, I'm just showing you all these that are highlighted in yellow, these are multipliers. They're called constants that you multiply by. Now, the reason I show you this is because in this section, which is six point whatever, let me pull it back up. Oh, there it is, 6.4. We're going to be studying variation. And variation is using K. Now, there's several different types of variation. Hold on a second, I'll get to where I'm at. There's K, okay? Write that down. This is called direct variation. So write down the word direct variation and then put out to the side Y is equal to K times X. Now, what if you have inverse variation? Come on. I'm not going to do that yet. Come on. Inverse variation. Is that. And then joint variation is that. So the, the three main variations that we're going to talk about is direct, inverse, and joint variation. Now, there's three types of formulas. I don't teach like the book teaches, so 
you just bear with me because I don't want to just show you a problem and do it. I want to show you what kind of problems you're going to have and go from there. Now there's three or four different type problems you're going to have with these variations. One, you're going to be given k x uh, y and z you're going to be given different different variables plug each other in other words they're going to say y is equal to k times x and x is equal to 20 and what are you going to do with x is equal to 20 and k is equal to 5 what are you going to do with those two numbers? Plug and choke. So the simplest problem that you're going to get with these problems is plug and choke. So y is equal to uh, k is 5 and 20 and k times y is equal to 100. Okay? That's the simplest question that you'll get in 6.4. The second type question you're going to get find K. Now finding K you've already done. We found out multiply by 2, multiply by Four, multiply by five, multiply by six, whatever the case may be. Once you find K, that's your multiply. So in those recipe questions, K came out to be two, came out to be three, came out to be four, depending on what we needed. In this case, they're going to give you the numbers. They're going to say Y is equal to K times X. Y is equal to 100 and x is equal to 4. Now what are you going to do? Well, you can either plug and chug and solve for k, or you can solve for k and plug and chug. doesn't matter. So I'm going to plug and chug. y is 100 is equal to k times what? Four. How do I get rid of multiplying by four? So k is equal to what? Twenty-five. Now, the difference between these two these two type questions is two is going to have an a, and it's going to have a b. Now it's going to ask for the formula for this inverse variable for this direct variation. And what are you going to do with k? You're going to plug it back into the original and write the formula. So what's the original, what's the equation? Y is equal to what? 25 times what? 25 times S. So that's the second type question you're going to get. What's the third type question you're going to get? Well, the third type question encompasses one and two and then adds a little bit more to it. The third type question, it asks you to find K, that's A, then it asks for the equation, that's B. And then it gives you more info. Okay. So y is equal to k times x. Y is equal to 10. X is equal to 5. So what do we do? 
plug each other. Remember? 10 is equal to k times 5, divide by 5. k is equal to what? 2. And what do we do in the second type problem? That's a. What, what do we do with b? Plug k back into the original. y is equal to 2 times k. I'm sorry, not 2 times k. 2 times x. And then c, we're going to say x is equal to 25. So what do you think you'll do with that 25 then? Plug it in. So that the y is equal to 2 times 25, and y is equal to what? And that's the three type questions you're going to get in 6.4. 10% of the questions I give you are going to come from the first one. 40% are going to come from the second one, and 40 to 50% are going to come from the third one. So you need to focus on number two and number three. You need to focus on this one and this one. Is that because I don't like y'all or because I want you to learn something? Y'all you know, just not going to talk to me today, is that it? Okay, that's fine. I just won't explain anything to y'all about that. Is that okay with y'all? Well, I would like to have interaction if, that was, if that's possible with y'all. All right, so here we go. Now, there's a couple more things I want to mention before we get to a problem. And this is all I want to mention. How do you do these problems when you're setting them up? Now, I've already showed you what kind of problems you're going to have. This is how you set them up. One, which variation. Right now, there's only three to choose from. One, two, and three. Inver I mean, direct, inverse, or join. So first, you find out which formula. Two, change variables. Or if, is every single question going to say y x varies directly as y? No. They may use different letters. Which way do we read? Left to right. So the first letter that comes in the paragraph is going to be interchanged with what? Y. Y is equal to k times x. The second letter will interact with x. But what about k? K never what? Changes. K stays K unless you plug something in for it. It does not change to another variable. The only letters that change to a variable, a different variable, is Y, X, and Z. They give you Z or W or something else. K does not change. And now, of course, four, do whatever they ask. In other words, one of those three problems that I just, one of those three types of problems I just asked. Now, you're going to see it in the first couple. You'll see what I'm talking about, so don't, don't spaz or anything. Let's go ahead and look at this first example. All right, I want you to look at it. All right, so I want you to take a minute. I'm going to sit down the hallway here. Write that problem. Find the equation. Plug each other. And see what you come up with.
Now, the length of a spring will stretch S varies what? So we're going to use Y is equal to what? Y is equal to T times X. Y is equal to K times X. What comes first in this sentence? The length that a spring will stretch what? The S goes with the Y. K never what? Never changes. And what's the other letter? So F is X. So there's, your, there's your equation for your formula. So all of this is done. Write the equation for the length that a spring will stretch. If the constant of the proportionality, blah, blah, blah. If the constant, what I tell you the constant was? Okay, so plug in 0 0.07 to K. S is equal to 0 0.07. Okay. Now this is a basic, it's a slide, okay? It's not, it's a teaching slide. It's not a homework problem, okay? This is showing you that they want, all they want is the, remember me telling you to put K back into the original equation, like on number two? Well, they're asking you to do it with this first equation. But they don't tell you to solve the K and give you other, they'll ask you to do that too. So this is pretty basic. Question. That's pretty simple. Y'all just not talking today. Why is that? I don't feel like talking much, Hubert. Oh, okay. Well, I appreciate the interaction, though. It always helps for a five or six hour constant period of teaching. It helps to have some interaction. I'm teaching from 8 o'clock in the morning to 2.30 in the afternoon. It helps to have students interact with you. So thank you. I appreciate it. Y'all suck. Y'all know that. <laughs> I think y'all would. I think y'all actually do it on purpose, not to talk to me. Is that what you do? <laughs> okay, look at this. One. The area of a picture projected on a movie screen varies what? Directly. Y is equal to K times X. Oh, why do they do this? See, I don't, I don't teach like this. They throw that D in there, and it's not time to throw the D in there. Okay, I'll go ahead and tell you what to do on this one because I don't agree with the way they're teaching. That's why they've got people fell on the plane. It's because they throw stuff in too quick. Varies directly as the square of the distance. Now, I want you to highlight that. Go ahead and write this down. Now, take the highlighter out. And the square of the distance, D, when you see that, the square of the distance, H, the square of the distance, Z, the square of the distance, P, that's going to be, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, when you see those words, that's going to be D squared. Right? The square of the blah, 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 P, that would be P squared. Most... Most of the time, students will take the square root. Do not do that. So to keep from the, to lessen the confusion, I just highlight this, and I tell students when you see the square of the distance, the square of the height, h, the square of the weight, w, you just put w or h or d, and you put it to the second power. You buy with me? Thank you, one person. I appreciate it. Okay, I'm sorry. Two people. Varies directly. Still two uh, out. Thirteen. Well, two out of thirteen. 
Okay. From the projector to the screen, if the projector, okay, just stop. Stop right here. Everything above here is figuring out the what? The formulas. So we got y is equal to k times x. That comes from this. The area, what is A going to be? What are you going to insert A for? Y. Because you read from left to right, and Y comes first, A comes first. So, change on the move string varies directly as the square of the what? Distance. So that'd be K times what? D squared. And now you're ready for the second part. <clears throat> so, I want you to do the second part. If a projector at a distance of 25 feet projects a screen at 100 feet, what is the area of projection? <clears throat> this is a type 2 question. Remember, if you're telling you two types, so you have to write the formula with the new K after you figure out what K is. If a projector is at a distance of what? K twenty-five square. And area of what? One hundred feet. What do you think they're gonna ask you to find? K. So what is twenty-five squared? Six twenty-five, eh? Divide both sides by 625, and K is equal to 100 divided by 625. And I'm just going to leave that as 100 over 625 for right now. And what are we going to do with 100 over 625 after we find it out? Plug it back into the what? Original equation. So I'm going to take this K and I'm going to plug it right in here. So A is equal to 100 over 625 times D squared. Now like I said, you can change that into a smaller fraction. You can change it into a decimal. I don't care. All right? Because all you're going to do at the end is take this 40 feet and plug it in where? right here and calculate it and calculate it. So go ahead and do that because that's part three. That's the third type question. After you find K and plug it back into the original equation, you do what? You take that more information, this is more info, and what do you do with the more info? You plug it in. So somebody take 40 times 40, which is what, 1,600, and multiply by 100 over 625. You get to just ask it. You get to just ask it. Why am I asking her that? No. What did I just tell y'all? You might have been playing on Facebook. Well, whatever you're playing with. It's a no, it wasn't. I say it. You can make this 100 over 625. You can keep it like this. You can make it a smaller fraction, or you can make it a decimal. 
Twice. I said it the first time, but you were playing on the phone. Yes, you were. Don't sit there and tell me a story. Okay, well, a while ago when you were playing on your phone, it had something that looked like Facebook. I'm sorry. But you can tell. All right. So what'd you get? What's 100 divided by 65 multiplied by 1600? Okay, I'm waiting. You're going to have to interact. Some of y'all with calculators, you're going to have to interact. I'm sorry, what? 256. So the area of the screen is 256 square feet. So 256, whatever you came out with. Feet. And that's the type of problems you're going to see on the case. How many? Probably one or two. Right. I mean, you don't have to because they have all the, they're just going to ask for the number. Okay? So this one is a type three question. And it asks you for. For it, it tells you, it gives you the stuff for the formula, then it tells you to put K back in, and then it tells you to figure with more info. All right, let's try another. Now let's see what else they have for us. Okay. Okay, there's, that has come out in point sixteen. 40, okay, there you go, 2 foot 6. I didn't know these things actually did that. This is the first time I used these, I think. I haven't used them before. All right, here's an inverse. Let's see. All right, the loudness. Loudness L of a stereo speaker measured in decibels that don't you don't know about that varies inversely as the square of the distance. What I say square of the distance meant D to the second power. Yes. Thank you for the interaction. I appreciate that. Three people, four people. Appreciate the four people interacting out of thirteen. Time's class over. Okay, we're gonna finish in five minutes because I gotta do the video and people beat down the door when they come in. The teacher should see about 15 minutes. What is today? Today biology. Or? Why? Oh, good. Thank you. Huh? Well, the teacher should be here like five minutes before class. I mean. I mean, before my class, and I'm like, are you early? And she, I've already dropped her a couple of hits, you know, trying to be nice. You're nice. Yeah, exactly. And she, like, keeps coming in earlier, and I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, are you just sitting away? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Let's go. Loudness, so that the L is equal to what? I'm going to put a big L. So you don't think that's a one. Big L is equal to what? K over what? And this one is D squared. So that takes care of all of that. And then they say if the loudness is 20, Loudness, L. When the listener is what? Six feet from the whatever. So what is K? Well, K is going to equal 20 
times 36. Well, that's easy. Because 36 times 10 is 360. 360 times 2 is 720. So 720 is equal to K. And what are we going to do with that 720? Plug it back in. And that gives me L is equal to 720 over D squared. So that's part two. Part one was actually finding the case. This is part one. That's part one. And part two is right there. So that takes care of this. Then what's left? Okay, well, they're done. Now, this part is where they would put more info. They would say, determine the equation or determine the loudness if a person was to be 50 feet from the speaker. Then if that was the case, you'd be L equals 720 over 50 raised to the what? Second positive. They don't give us that, but I'm just saying, if there was more information, it would be after this comma right here. It would say, determine the decibels or loudness if a person wants to be 50 feet away from the... And that's the test questions I'm going to give you. Okay? No comment? Of course not, not in this class. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate y'all's interaction. It really helps out, makes class go by quicker. <laughs>